Okay, follow me with this. Just because something sounds good, but it's not good, it actually means that what sounded good is not good. <laughs> Did you catch me? Like, just because something sounds good, but it isn't good, it means that that thing is not good. And, and so this is kind of a myth. It, it, it sounds fulfilling, but it actually doesn't fulfill you. And, and one of the things that actually happens when it comes to the Bible is uh, we take verses out of context and, and we take things that sound really good in the way that we want them to sound. But then when that thing doesn't work out, we get really frustrated and angry. And then we're like, oh, that's just mythic. It's just a myth. It's just a lie. But, but what we need to do is take these verses and we need to put them back in their original context and the way they were intended to be read, right? So here's a great example, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says this, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he won't let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of of escape that you may be able to endure it. This is 1 Corinthians 10, 13 from the ESV uh, transition. Now, so let's go with the myths or what sounds a bit mythical here. Like, okay, God won't give you more than you can handle. Uh, when you handle it, you will win and become a victor. So what you need to do right now is stop whining. You got to stop doubting. You got to stop complaining. If you can't handle it or overcome it, the actual issue is an issue of your faith. What's actually happening is, friend, you're probably not praying enough. You're not worshiping enough. You're not trusting God enough. So what you need to do is lift yourself up from your bootstraps and take God's word seriously. There's nothing that you're experiencing that you can't overcome. Remember, no temptation has overtaken you. And if it can't overtake you, you need to overtake it. Well, hold up, not so fast. What does this verse actually mean? Does it mean everything that I just said? Yes and no. So let's take this back into its context. Remember, Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and his words are actually rooted in a very specific historical, social, and cultural context for us to consider. Here's how we need to re-understand this verse. Paul in verse 12 is actually dealing with the issue this is so fascinating, a food that was dedicated to idols that the Corinthians felt felt pressured into eating. They felt like they had no other choice and they had to adhere to this kind of social and cultural pressure because there wasn't another option for them. There was no way out. In response to this, Paul says in verse 13 that there isn't anything that we face that correspond to our natural human condition that we can't endure. Uh, one of the challenges that we have with this verse and how it's applied is that we want to see it in one specific dimension. We want to limit this verse to an earthly dimension when Paul wants us to actually see this verse from a multidimensional perspective. Okay, let me break this down for you. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common. That first word in Greek, pierasmos, it can mean temptation, being seduced into sin or trials and testing. And Paul is reminding the Corinthians that they don't have to be overtaken or succumb to the social pressures to participate in festivals that would compromise their Christian conviction. The issue of food dedicated to idols falls within the realm of common to man and is not some supernatural divine test that's outside of their capacity or their scope. Now, yes, there may be consequences that result in persecution by saying no. But this doesn't mean they don't have a choice. It just means that their choices come with consequences. Paul is affirming their human agency while also reminding them that they are being supported and aided by divine help that starts with the faithfulness of Jesus. You see, God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure. God's help comes to us in two ways. First, because what we face is within the natural bounds of the human situation, it will be within the bounds of what we can endure. And then second, which is the qualifier for the first, Everything that we face as humans is limited by time and space. This means there's always an end date to the trial or the temptation, even if we may not be aware of what that is. The sobering reality is that there are some things we will endure that includes the fallen nature of the human condition as a result of sin and sickness in this world. It's here that Paul asks us to make the perspective switch from one-dimensional to multi-dimensional. 
The perspective that we need here is the divine perspective that is a ray of hope for the earthly reality, for every temptation and trial that we face. There's always an associated way of escape. The Greek word there is ekbasis. Uh, what this word means is uh, an, a way of escape or an escape hatch. It can also simply mean an end, like the ending of a movie. This speaks to the divine perspective that complements our earthly one. For example, the long endurance of sickness may result in healing, where the sickness comes to an end and the earthly life continues, or it may lead to death, where the sickness still comes to an end and the earthly life ceases, but an eternal life in the new heavens and the new earth starts. This is the divine perspective that Paul wants us to remember. In the words of the late great pastor, theologian, and scholar Eugene Peterson, who echoes Paul, the Christian life is a journey that leads us into a long obedience in the same direction. This is what Paul is getting at when he says we will be able to endure it. This is a type of endurance that is marked by patience. And patient endurance is only fruitful when it endures towards obedience to Jesus. Our obedience matters and it has consequences. I don't think we need to focus on overcoming and winning or proving to the world that we are victors because these are descriptive of actually what Jesus has already done on the cross. Rather, our focus is on obedience, endurance, and patience. Jesus modeled this in the incarnation and beckons us to participate in this work as we await the King and His coming kingdom.